I am so happy to see you today. Thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi. I hope you had a good safe week. And right now we're going to three thrift stores and I cannot wait to show you what we find. So there's gonna be something for everybody. Probably not, but what the heck, you know? Let's keep hope alive. Painted, I think these are the bowls that were commissioned by Pier One years, I mean decades ago. Very, very beautiful collector's items. Wow, beautiful. Oh wow, there's two of them. Why good men are tempted, and then there's an apple. Okay, is that like an Adam and Eve type thing? I love apples. That's probably not their point. She does not look happy. The book is called Another Woman. You know what? I don't want drama right now. I just want pizza. That is a very beautiful pot. This is made in Germany, I believe. It's really gorgeous. I think the thing that makes it so gorgeous is the way it's designed. This face would be kind of hard to pass up. It does look like swagware to me. I'm not sure. I would say a vase is probably, I don't know, 14 inches high. I love this. This is crystal and frosted glass. I love these trays for a dresser. A drawing? It's older, I think, than I am. That's amazing. Oh my goodness, look over here. Boy, that is, I recognize that woman who, who did this watercolor. Oh my gosh, that is the capital in Virginia. Oh, that's beautiful. Look, at it is a numbered and signed print. I love it. There's nothing like a boot lamp that says I love you. I should buy that for the neighbor who hates me. Holy macro, look at that frame. That's a really nice brass Art Nouveau frame. Oh gosh, they were selling these for $25 in the 1970s. Without a doubt, someday I'm gonna get to Paris and I'm also gonna go to Montreal. I can only ask for one particular direction and that is, où est la bibliothèque? <laughs> so I'm all set if I'm looking for a library. a beautiful ceramic teapot. Boy, that's in perfect condition. Look at the lines on that, or should I say the lack of lines. Everything is curved. Very, very beautiful for fall to display. You could use it as a vase or just an accent piece. Very, very pretty. Is that John Wilkes Booth? Why would you want that on your Oh no, it's Jack Daniels. <laughs> I was gonna say, why would, why would, never mind. I paid over $20 for a pair of earrings that look just like this. I think I'm gonna grab these. Should I? You know, if I was Jack Daniels and I was putting my face on glasses, I would definitely have changed my look. So what do you think? Do you like the lamp? This is wrought iron and it looks like sort of a sort of rust aluminum shade. Very unique, very pretty. I love dishes so much. Dishes are just so happy. When you're getting out your nice china, it means you have company and all is well with the world. Oh, isn't that pretty? That's a three piece set. What, $5.99? Very lovely little tea set. Very, very pretty. from the 50s. It's just so pretty. Very good condition. A lot of patina in it.
thrift store. How do you think we did? I think we did great. Did you have a good time? I had a really good time. <laughs> so yeah, I grabbed the beautiful um, orange teapot. I thought this would look so pretty for fall. You know, kind of a beautiful vignette. When looking for teapots that are completely round, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to find, so I just loved it. I have decorated some very pretty homes and I would always stop at Pier 1 and pick up the most beautiful hand-painted items and they were a bit expensive but I loved them. So there is no Pier 1 here anymore. I don't I think they're out of business, aren't they? But I do remember that Pier 1 would commission certain companies to produce hand-painted items for them and they were so gorgeous. And they were so out of my price range. So when I saw this, there were two of them. So I did grab them. I just think the colors of yellow and burgundy and blue, they're just, they're so pretty. They're so vibrant when you see them in person. There's something about when you use colorful hand-painted bowls for a centerpiece or an accent piece, you can put a beautiful bowl anywhere. And it looks expensive and it looks gorgeous. So I grabbed them. <laughs> There used to be the little Hallmark stores on the corner. My mama worked in uh, one of those stores and as a little girl I'd go through and everything looked so magical. And they would sell frames that looked just like this. The, the kind of the, the real pretty Art Nouveau brass frames. So I was really excited to see that at the thrift store and I grabbed it. One thing I love to do is when I get a beautiful frame, I love to take an artist that I adore and make sure I get a nice, you know, solid uh, print and slip it into the frame and then put it as an accent piece uh, somewhere in my home. And the reason I love doing that is it allows me to enjoy fine art without putting it on my wall because I realize I'm kind of a maximist, so I have a tendency to fill up my walls. So it's kind of a nice thing to actually take an artist you love, slip it in a beautiful frame, and be on your way. <laughs> stores you see a lot of bad stuff you see a lot of bad pottery and a lot of bad vases but when that one vase stands out and it's so gorgeous you know it and everything clicks and that's what this vase was like for me I don't know if you can see just how beautiful this vase is but this is I don't know can you call it a statement vase <laughs> kind of heavy for a pendant but anyway <laughs> it's gorgeous it is the color of like a purple slagware and it's very heavy it's very thick and then it has this beautiful kind of ombre going into the white it's gorgeous 
It's just great. I grabbed that vase so fast. I tell you, I just loved it. Those are the kind of vases that, yes, they do look very expensive. People who visit you will say, you know, holy smokes, where'd you get that vase? But, you know, that isn't really the, the reason that I bought it. I bought it because it was the most beautiful thing I had seen all day. It's so pretty. thrifting and something is so beautiful and special you do stop in your tracks but then sometimes you see something like this this is like a poor man's chintz and I just I, I grabbed it not because it's worth anything and not because I think you'll buy it on eBay but it has the colors of my quilt in my bedroom for fall so I thought I'm going to grab it and I want to put um, some dried flowers in it, maybe a little bit of burgundy, and I thought it would be just perfect. Whenever I show a candle holder that has birds on it and has some really pretty patina, somebody always asks if they can buy it. I think that's so adorable. This is very pretty. All right, tell me the truth. Did you guess I was going to buy the lamp? I love this lamp. This lamp reminds me of Frank Lloyd Wright and there was something about this shade and it's hard to find at least for me it's hard to find lamps that I can afford that look like this there are a few things that I have in mind for this lamp and in my bedroom I have a very pretty Victorian lamp well I think that's just like a bit much I would like something a little bit more modern in there but kind of I don't know kind of mellow for the winter so I thought this lamp might do the trick also when you have a kind of arts and crafts lamp to have it in a hallway or a foyer it doesn't get much better than that. It's so beautiful and it will fit with any type of decor. So I grabbed this lamp. Yeah, I did. I wanted that shade and I got my way. I got this painting oh my goodness you know when I saw this painting I recognized who the artist was her name is Luca Restrepo and I know her I know her work from Joni Mitchell and Nashville Tennessee and Fury Sings the Blues and New Orleans but yeah we don't want to go there <laughs> but her work is so beautiful. The colors, the detail, and how much she loved architecture. She lived all her life in New Orleans. And she passed away less than six months ago. She, she passed away in March. And she was 95 years old. How cool is that? She lived such a long, beautiful life. And she passed away just a few months after her husband of 70 years passed away. Last week when I was reading your comments under my video, Quite a few of you said, you seem so sad. Why are you so sad? I'm worried about you. And there was no need to be worried at all. And, you know, I was sad, but you know, I don't like to burden you, but I will. <laughs> anyway, I was sad. Last week I went to the 
Van Gogh exhibit and I was totally overwhelmed. And his paintings were so beautiful. But I was keenly aware that Van Gogh never lived past 40. He took his own life. And so as I'm leaving the exhibit, that kind of was within me. And I felt, I was asking myself to all great artists or all artists in general, if you are a creative artistic person, do you have to pay for that talent with such a tragic life? And I think one of the reasons this was bothering me so much is my grandchildren are very creative, especially my oldest grandson. And I worry, I worry, and that's why I felt kind of down. So when I found this painting by Lucra, I thought, wait a minute, this woman became famous. All kinds of awards, collectors pay thousands and thousands of dollars for her art. And she lived to be 95 and she had a very happy life. So it made me feel so much better when I recognized her work there in the thrift store. I recognized that woman who, who did this watercolor. I found Lucra's painting is right where I found Bee's painting. These two women were both amazing artists. One became famous and one did not. And yet, they both led long, happy lives. And, and Lucra, especially when you read about her, when she was a little girl, she loved to paint. She loved to draw. And, you know, back then, it was like, you want to do what? You know, and her dad was like, no, no, no. You know, your art is pretty good, but... You're not special. You're not good enough. You'll never be able to support yourself. You go out there, you find a nice young man, you settle down, you have kids. Forget about all this art. But she never would and she'd be punished for it. But she kept at it because she loved it. And she wanted to communicate. And she would never paint from, from photographs. She would paint from the things that she remembered in her mind of all her travels. And that would be her way of painting for the rest of her life. She met the love of her life and they were married for 70 years. They settled in New Orleans where she would paint every day. So that made me feel a little bit better about as the years go on, how I can feel I can truly encourage my grandson to embrace his artistic talents. But I think we're all an artist inside. And maybe all of us have been told at one time or another, you're not good enough. You're not special. You're okay, but you're just not special. And maybe we have carried that around with us all our lives. You have always told me that there are no accidents, that everything happens for a reason. So maybe in all of us finding Bee's painting and Lucra's paintings, maybe there's a message in this for us. I think it's important for me to remember that life is tough. Life is tough on everybody, whether you're an artist or not. So I think I need not worry so much about my grandchildren. I think with a lot of love and encouragement for what they're trying to do, I think they're going to be just fine. I have to believe that. I want them to pursue their artistic talents wherever that may lead them.
a new painting? I think you do. You just sit and stare at it all day. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I loved every second of it. And if you get a chance down below, could you share if anybody ever said something to you like you weren't good enough? Did anybody ever rain on your parade when you were young or any time in your life? Please have yourself a wonderful, safe, brand new week. And when you're done with your week, come back and see me and Desi, okay? All right, it's a deal. I'll be here. I love dishes so much. Dishes are just so happy. When you're getting out your nice china, it means you have company. And all is well with the world. <laughs>